For the better part of the past two years, you've seen me smoke a lot of different cigars and the tomfoolery that comes along with my cigar review shenanigans. <laughs> but even though I prefer a more lighthearted approach to reviewing cigars, I fully recognize the fact that sometimes you have to take a cigar seriously. And today's cigar review is one of those sticks that I will be reviewing in a more serious fashion. 1948 by La Palina is a stick that commemorates the 75th birthday of La Palina chairman Bill Paley. Bill is the grandchild of the original founders of La Paulina, and it was his grandmother who was Goldie. If the name Goldie sounds familiar to you, it's because this was a cigar of the month that we did a few months back, and it was named after Bill's grandmother. This cigar is all about celebrating Bill's life which is why 1948 is the name of the blend. That was the year that Bill Paley was born. Released in 2023 at the PCA trade show, this stick garnered a ton of attention and for very good reason. Not only was it a limited special edition run, but because of its backstory. As you can see, there's Bill himself on the side of the stick during his Vietnam War days and his signatures above it. And if you flip the cigar around, you will see on the back side, there's New York City in 1948, where Bill is from. And then on the other side, there is Esteli, Nicaragua. The Esteli side of the band, which you can kind of see behind Bill's picture, is from 1948 as well. And of course, there's the La Palina signature LP on the back. The reason why Esteli is on one part of the cigar band is because this cigar is produced down in Esteli itself. This is an Oliva production. So La Polina teamed up with them to produce the cigar and use their tobacco as well. Speaking of tobacco, this cigar has an Ecuadorian Sumatran wrapper on it that has been aged for an additional two years. Internals are a Nicaraguan combo, both Oliva products, of course. The feel of the cigar is nice. It's not oily whatsoever. It's very dry to the touch and to the eye. And yes, it is a little veiny, but it's a Sumatran, which is to be expected. Altogether, though, very nice presentation and, and a very appropriate nod to Bill. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. While this blend has been available on the Claro website since it first came in later last year, we haven't really promoted it because I smoked a couple of them and felt that it could use a little more aging. The flavors were good, but I could tell that they were just going to get better with an extra few months of sitting in the Claro walk-in humidor. And here is why. I received several samples at the La Polina booth last PCA show, and I liked every single one that I smoked. I believe this will be my fifth cigar uh, in the 1948 line that I've smoked. And every single one has been good, but I kept feeling, I think it just could use a little bit more uh, age and be a little bit more on the round side. And sure enough, smoked another one the other day, and it has improved greatly. The wrapper smells wonderful. It's not a very in-your-face Sumatran. It's got this mild, spiced tea note, dry, chalky, clay-like soil, and it's got a little bit of sweetness and a nice aged leather aromatic to it. The foot is a bit more complex. It's got a little bit of dried orange peel to it, along with more of that Sumatran spicy zestiness that we enjoy, as well as some dry oaky tannin notes and more soil. All in all, a very nice aromatic cigar. And the only issue that I have encountered with any of them thus far is that the wrapper tends to be a little bit on the delicate side. So sometimes you'll encounter a little bit of a flake or a tiny little crack forming in it, but construction wise, they seem to burn pretty damn well. Speaking of burning, let's burn one down and see how it goes, shall we? Cold pulls 
are dry and very tannin-like. A lot of hardwood notes to be detected in the cold pulls on this cigar, as well as some spiced tea, a little bit of Sumatran spice, and some of that orange zest that I noted from the uh, foot. The tea-like notes, though, are more of a nutty, milky tea taste, so it makes me think of a milk chai tea, which I detect a lot in Sumatran wrap cigars. You may find that this cigar starts you off with some vegetal notes. It's herbal. Uh, makes me think a little bit of sage, desert sage, along with some oaky tannins, to be expected, some soil, and just a very nice, medium, sun-grown Sumatran spice undertone. It's a very smooth start to the cigar, and one that eases you into more and more flavor profiles as it builds. This cigar is so smooth that you can retrohale its entirety and not once get burnt, at least in the first third, which is going splendidly. Wonderful white ash, tiny bit of a flake here and there, great draw, plenty of smoke, medium, nutty, generic nutty, mind you, uh, nothing super heavy peanut-wise, just a faint nuttiness, and lots of oaky tannin notes. There is still a little bit of Sumatran spice to be found in the cigar, but because it, that wrapper has been aged an extra two years, it is very mellow. It's just smooth. Let's take a moment to appreciate the ash on this cigar as well. It is box pressed and it develops a beautiful burn because of this. Very lengthy ash stays on for a good bit, um, it's a third at a time typically before I tap it off or it drops on its own accord. And the aromatics of the cigar that come off of it while it burns are wonderfully built. It's almost as if the cigar was constructed to smell great and not just taste great. It also burns very cool and smoke production is top notch but it's right about here in the first third where the second third is just about to begin that the sumatran spice notes from the wrapper begin to make their presence known as the sumatran spice notes start to become more of a prominent flavor profile within the cigar you will note that flavor and a little bit of body tick up a notch. Still very medium, but wow, very tasty, super aromatic and clean. For all you fans of Sumatran tobacco out there, embrace the second third of this cigar for all that it has to offer, which is a lot. Not so much in extreme depth or spice or complexity just in its smooth approach and delivery it's a very clean tasting clean burning cigar with wonderful mellow sumatran notes of spice chai tea milk nuts very much uh, a, a progression of the first third it has kicked up the flavor profile a notch so it is just a solid medium throughout but nothing overly peppery at all. That's something that I've noticed with all these sticks. There's no pepper spice really, which is kind of interesting because sometimes Sumatran tobacco tends to have these things. The aftertaste is also very nice and smoke production continues to be solid. It is burning a little hot right now, but that's okay. It's not charry at all. And it looks like the final third is gonna be a winner. <laughs> on an interesting side note, if you remove the band on the cigar, there's an entire backstory and a little nod to Bill Paley's life inside of the band. 
So when you remove it, take care and read up. For the first and second third, you will likely notice that the cigar remains a bit on the dry side. It's not very sweet at all. And that chalky dried clay taste is the soil-like note you will likely pick up. But with the start to the final third beginning, everything turns a little darker on you. This means that the dry soil clay-like notes turn into something a little bit more of a terroir, darky rainforest rich note. It's not funky at all though. Some cigars will get that kind of funky composty like note or animal hide barnyard smell and taste. This blend prefers to lean toward clean, smooth, and dark. And it's a dark nutty note that you find that sits right next to all the Sumatran mild spice that's still everywhere within the stick. Smoke production remains one of this cigar's shining attributes as well. It makes for a very fun cigar to play with in regard to smoke that is exhaled. Definitely one that's good if you're into smoke rings and things like that. I like the final third of this cigar the most. It's its most complex moment where the Sumatran wrapper really shines and the all Nicaraguan binder and filler combo starts to add more depth to the cigar. It's darker than before, a little bit sweeter too, and there's a faint fruitiness to it that I can't really put my finger on, but it makes me think of dry, dark fruits. Spice from that Sumatran wrapper is also a little bit more on the upper end of medium too, and that makes for good balance between all of the above. And you can still retrohale all of it without it burning your nostrils. It's wonderful in that regard. And the smoothness of the cigar and the smoke itself makes for a wonderful way to finish out the stick when a lot of other cigars will be getting a little too intense or even charry on you. The blend still provides loads of oaky hardwood tannin notes too. That is something I've noticed in all of these cigars that I've smoked that continues to be a constant throughout. It's just part of the cigar flavor profile. And if you are into this and like a cigar that's a little bit on the drier side, this is one of those sticks that you're probably gonna go goo goo gaga over. As I indulge in parting puffs and love every single passing moment of it, I think of where this cigar has taken me and what it represents. I think Oliva did a fantastic job of creating a cigar to celebrate Bill Paley's life. This has to be one of the smoothest Sumatran cigars I've had in recent memory. It is lean, it is tasty without being overboard, and stays medium from start to finish. It's not the darkest or spiciest or most complex Sumatran cigar that we have in our portfolio, but this cigar is not trying to be the most intense Sumatran cigar on the market. It's meant to be a smooth experience with refined notes from start to finish, which it delivers. The only complaints I've had with the cigar was in the second third when I had to do two touch-ups pretty much back to back, which is okay. We encounter these things in even the most premium cigars, but it did flake a good bit on me here and there. Some dropped ashes too, to be exact. And it is a little frustrating knowing that your burn is not looking so great at times. Another potential downside to the cigar for some people is that it is not a very sweet blend. Some people like a sweeter Sumatran. This one favors more of that dry, oaky tannin and soil-like tone. But if you like that type of flavor profile, this blend is one that you should definitely try out. Smoke production is wonderful. The smoke itself 
is really nice and very velvety. And the aftertaste is delicious. There's a lot to like in the way that the cigar smells too. It's an aromatic Sumatran and a very clean smelling stick. Nothing funky about it from start to finish. Even now in parting puffs, I'm really enjoying it. And outside of it burning a little bit hot here and there in the first third and into the second third, it's burned cool ever since. And the ash has straightened itself out in the final third and so on. In my personal opinion, this deserves a 4.4 .4 out of 5 stars in my journal. It's a blend that I think will benefit from additional aging. So if you buy some, sit on them for a little while, smoke some too, see how you like them, and then revisit in a year or so and see how the blend has mellowed even further. Yeah, Sumatran spice, mellow, chai tea, very nice, which is what I've paired it with, an iced homemade chai tea, a little bit of milk on top, tasty. So thanks for joining me for my review of the 1948 by La Palina and Oliva, and I will catch y'all in the next review. Cheers.